Good morning. Good morning. Merry Christmas to all of you. I trust that your holiday has been good, and that we're glad that you're here this morning. Now, I all realize that uh, lots of times word just doesn't travel uh, to everybody, and I found that out on Friday when talking to uh, someone from the church. Uh, for those who did not get the message, I am standing here today because Pastor Brian had a mild heart attack on Christmas Day or Christmas morning. So uh, we were hoping to get the word out so that we wouldn't have the air sucked out of the room uh, this morning when, when I stood here. I do have a message uh, from him, which I'm going to share in a minute. And uh, well, we figured we'd let people come in, get settled, uh, make sure that everybody knew uh, why he wasn't here. And uh, uh, he is doing well, though. And uh, there's a, he has, uh, in his message that I'll read, uh, there's a lot of information there for you. But I do want to get the other announcements out of the way, and there might be a late person coming in uh, as I do that, although if I'm not walking in the door, we don't have a whole lot of announcements to make. I've been asked to let you know DVDs for the choir cantata are available for, on loan, and they're out with the other uh, service DVDs in the Narthex, and you sign them out, but they're laying on top. There's several of them that you can borrow. Uh, you can borrow and take them and copy them. Uh, you don't have a copyright on them, right, Frank? Take them home, copy them, bring them back. Um, it is on Facebook. So you can also see, if you're a member of Facebook, you can see the Cantata on Facebook. And it will be posted to the website uh, eventually, but it's not there yet. And, uh, that, and once it gets to the website, then it's also available on YouTube. And uh, so, but you can, uh, if you don't have the internet and you just have a DVD player, or you want to take a, and copy it yourself, their copies are available. Sign them out and bring them back. Saturday is, uh, and it'll be the first Saturday of the new year. The men's 747 um, breakfast is that Saturday, and uh, at, uh, at 747, because we meet at right, uh, 747, right before 8 o'clock. And well, we have a good time at the breakfast. If you can make it, that's good. Uh, and then, for those, if you're at the breakfast, we want you to come back to the church. Because uh, Saturday morning, and they'll probably start before we're done with breakfast, but uh, is the time that we start taking away the Christmas. And uh, so uh, this is the last Saturday for the tree and the beautiful decorations. We want to thank Ken Schertzer, who leads the group, but he has lots of Christmas helpers that help decorate the church. And uh, the people who uh, gave the poinsettias, and we're glad that they did that. And... Uh, if you missed um, a lot of the services, you have to wait till next year. So, uh, but next Saturday morning, D decoration, and Ken uh, needs some helpers for that. What time are you starting, Ken? Eight o'clock. So, if you come to the breakfast, we may just—you might be done till we get to when we get here. <laughs> Uh, I do want to also announce to make sure that the nominating committee, they, the, I think we got the word out to most of you. Some may have missed. Uh, we will be meeting following the worship service, and uh, my goal is to make it 15 to 20 minutes. My, but uh, if 30 minutes arrives, we, we will just adjourn and finish up another time. So, uh, but it won't be a long meeting, but uh, that will be after the morning worship, the nominating committee. Everything else, read your bulletins. There's a lot of information in there that I'm not going to read to you. And, but at this time, I am going to read uh, the message that uh, Pastor Brian uh, wants us to hear. Dear Zion family, thank you for your prayers during an, my unexpected Christmas visit to the Good Samaritan Hospital. Thankfully, Lindsay and Sam were home and were able to come with Janice and I to the ER when I started experiencing symptoms early on Christmas morning, which he didn't say, but it was around 3 in the morning. 
After a catheterization, doctors discovered a blockage in a tiny artery in my heart. The artery was too small for a stent, so they treated me with blood thinners. I came home Thursday and feeling fairly well, though tired as can be expected after an event like this. Though it was a heart attack, the doctors are classifying it as mild or minor due to the smallness of the blocked artery. Going forward, Janice and I will be working to make some lifestyle changes as I begin the process of recovering. We also want to prioritize making these changes in order to prevent any further heart incidences in the future, minor or major. 2019 will hopefully be a year of healthy choices. I will be going to cardiac rehabilitation to learn the best ways to balance life, work, and well-being. This means that for a time, my day-to-day -day activities at the church may be limited. Though I will begin my return to the church office on January 2nd, Pastor Ron Miller has agreed to be on call for pastoral emergencies and visitation in the coming week through January 7th. For today, I know Zion's ministries are in very good hands and we'll be looking forward to serving and worshiping with you again very soon. May the Lord bless and keep us all as we enter 2019 in his hands with thanks and love from Pastor Brian, Janice, Lindsay, and Sam. And we are very thankful that it was a mild heart attack and uh, I did see him on Wednesday and uh, he was looking much, much uh, better than what he said he was feeling on Tuesday. And, uh, and I did, uh, we did have some conversations uh, in the meantime. And uh, he, I think he is doing very well. And we look forward to very possibly to be back here in the pulpit, maybe next Sunday. But we're not, we're crossing that bridge yet. We'll see how things go this week. Any other announcements? If there's nothing else, please pay, uh, call you, uh, pay attention to the prelude as we worship the Lord. Thank you. 
bow before you, not only as the babe in the manger, but as our Savior, our resurrected Lord, we give you glory and we give you praise. And we thank you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> oh, no, I can't. <laughs> I can get in and out.
Both of the choir's numbers are excerpts from uh, the cantata, which we was performed on Christmas Eve. We are going to be singing some Christmas carols interlaced with some scripture. And uh, so if you're watching the clock, I was just thinking uh, the, there's a video that we're going to be showing in place of the pastor's message. It's only seven minutes long. So when you see, wow, we got all these songs to sing, and then there's a video by this guy, and we're going to be here to mid now. We should have you out in good time. But we want you to enjoy the Christmas season. We thought uh, since uh, we didn't have uh, the pastor's message that we could uh, spend some time and uh, have a little mini Christmas hymn sing. And uh, so we're going to be singing and reading the Christmas story uh, for the next uh, part of the service. So enjoy this and pay attention And when we read the scripture. I'm going to start with Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. At that time, the Roman emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was, first, this was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who now was expecting a child. Sing, O Little Town of Bethlehem, with us. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them at the inn.
this time, the children may proceed to Children's Church. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. <coughs> the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped in snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. <coughs> Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Let's stand. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. 
they hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and pondered them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. fathom such a mystery the God of all eternity the one whose voice had thundered let there be would wrap himself in flesh who could know or ever understand the wonder of the father's plan the one who breathed the breath of life in men was drawing his first breath. Born to live so that we could live. Born to die so that death would never win. Born to take the chains of sin and live them broken in the grave. They shout the glory of his birth as shepherds make their way to be the first to witness God's own son. See the virgin cradling her child, a bitter sadness in her smile. She holds him close, remembering all the while the reason he has come. Born to live, so that we could live. Born to die, so that death would never win. Born to take the chains of sin and leave them broken in the grave. Born to live, born to die. 
At this time, the ushers will come forward and we'll uh, worship with our tithes and our offerings. And the offertory, it will be by George and Carol Klein. Just think of it. The baby Jesus is just about a week old and begins roughly a 30-some year of love, giving hope, feeling pain, being our support, saving us. How wonderful it is. And it's for us to sing now. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. <clears throat>
Father, we thank you that you are the way, the truth, and the life. We are thankful this morning, and we pray your blessing upon each one that's here and upon the gifts that they have given. And we give you glory for it all in Jesus' name. Thank you. you. May be seated. I was just getting wondering whether Ron usually walks up on the. And, and I go, where? And I thought, well, maybe there aren't any prayer concerns. Not a chance. <laughs> there looks like there's a number of them. Before we go to the prayer concerns, though, I did not recognize visitors that uh, may be with us at, at, during the announcements. And it's like you always forget something. And I forgot the pew pads, which is too late. Now, if you haven't signed the pew pad, we still want your name. Uh, it is, uh, if you have a prayer request that you didn't uh, put in there, we'll give you an opportunity to shout that out in a minute. I do want to recognize uh, my mother-in-law, who is visiting with us, and uh, Marion uh, DeLong, and she's with us, and of course, she's been with us in the past, and we're glad she's here and, and visiting. Uh, anybody else back there? Harvey? Bob Shue and Shirley, we're glad you're here. Anybody else that we should be recognizing? I see a finger point, but I don't know who that is. Oh, is that your sister? Yes, oh, I, I didn't see recognize her at first. Yes. Juanita, thank you. Thank you for sharing with us this morning. Along with uh, continuing in prayer for uh, Pastor Brian and the family, uh, we also want to uh, pray for Pat Hartman's neighbor, that she will find new housing. Linda Miller asks uh, for her neighbor, uh, just found out she, has, she had cancer and is uh, having surgery on, or had surgery this past Friday. Tristan Taylor asks uh, uh, for a girl named V to find her way to God and her family and her illness, to come home and rejoin her family in good health. And she praises the Lord for strength for all to continue in, the, in any time so that they may, be, they may enjoy good and unforeseen things. Great thing to praise the Lord for. And we have a praise. It is Bob Auer's birthday today. So happy birthday, Bob. He's going, who said that? They didn't, they didn't sign it. It's just on the note, so I can't blame anybody. So we wish a happy birthday to Bob. Any others that we, uh, that if you didn't uh, have one handed in, give you an opportunity to shout it out? If not, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we rejoice, and we have been worshiping in celebration of the coming of Jesus, our Savior, who came into this earth as a man, as a baby. It's hard to comprehend this great plan of salvation why God himself would leave all the wonders of heaven to become one of us. But we thank you for that, especially in this Christmas season. Father, we have, may not have lived the type of life that you wanted us to. We may have done some things this week that were displeasing. But Lord, as we worship you this morning, we give those things to you. We ask for your forgiveness so that we can continue and become the good people that you've called us to be. Father, each of us has issues concerns, burdens that may not have been mentioned. And we take time now to lift those to you. We 
We are truly thankful that you want to listen when we have a problem. That you want to be there for us and even carry us through troubled times. Father, we also have a lot to be thankful for. A lot to praise you for. And we lift those things to you at this time. The Christmas season many times brings so many blessings. Not just gifts that were in the form of packages, but time with family, time with friends. But we also know, Father, that the Christmas season sometimes brings bad memories and heartaches for some. We lift those people to you that they may find strength and comfort in you. Father, for the needs of, of these neighbors, the neighbor who has cancer and is healing from surgery as we speak, the neighbor that needs new housing, Father, we pray for, the, for thee that she will find her way to you. And that she'll be able to rejoin her family in good health. And Father, whatever other needs that are on our minds this morning, we lift it to you. Father, may we have the peace and the joy that we sing about at Christmas. May that be a part of all of our lives as we leave here today. And may we share that with the world around us. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll read from Luke. 22, uh, Luke 2, 22 through 24. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it was, as it was written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of doves or two young pigeons I'm standing on the southern steps of the Temple Mount platform here in Jerusalem. Straight to my left is the Mount of Olives. Right in front of me is the City of David. In one of our other videos, we were taking it from across this valley where Abraham first saw the Ridge of Moriah, which I'm standing on. From this bedrock step that I'm standing on, Herod cut monumental steps going up to the temple. A wide step a narrow step, a wide step, so that people would come slowly into the presence of God. It was right here in Luke chapter 2 that one of the most amazing events in the life of Christ took place. I'm going to be reading from verse 25 of Luke 2, and it says, There was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was just, devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and listened to these last words, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. Luke records for us one of the great lessons of the New Testament, and that lesson is, what does a spirit-filled man look like? And what does a spirit-filled woman look like? Back to back, from verse 25 down through verse 35, we see a spirit-filled man named Simeon and a spirit-filled woman named Anna. It says that the Holy Spirit was upon Simeon and it was revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. That's how God describes Jesus. Jesus is the Lord, God Almighty's Christ. 
Christ means the anointed one, the Messiah, Mashiach. It means the one who fulfills all the promises of God. We're doing a study of the life of Christ here in Jerusalem, looking at what Jesus did. What did he do? He came to give people the privilege of becoming the temple of the Holy Spirit. What is it like when we become the temple of the Holy Spirit? In other words, when we get saved and when the Spirit lives within us? This is what it says in verse 26. He came by the Spirit into the temple, and verse 27, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do to him according to the law, he, Simeon, took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, now I'm standing on the steps that led in the first century up into the temple. Down below is the city of David. Jesus would have been brought by his parents, Joseph and Mary, from Nazareth down to the city of David. They would have found a place to stay. They would have ceremonially been bathed in mikvah, preparing to come before the Lord. And then they would have, on the most special day of their lives, presented their child, the Messiah, in dedication to the Lord. So they were thinking of that moment of bringing Jesus up, the promised one given to them to raise, and bringing him up these steps to go into the temple to offer a sacrifice. As they were walking up, a man, an elderly man, began walking down the steps, looking at them like he knew them, and his face was all aglow. And he said to them, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace. According to your word, my eyes have seen your salvation. When Simeon saw Jesus, he said, I'm seeing my salvation. Simeon is such an example. He was one who was filled with the Spirit. The, the Spirit illumined him, gave him understanding. In verse 27, the Spirit led him. You know, Paul said, all of us who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. One of the evidences of salvation is to be led by the Spirit of God. But he was also satisfied. He said, let your servant depart in peace. A spirit-filled life is one led by the Spirit, filled by the Spirit, and satisfied by the Spirit. But these steps have a second person that came. That second person is Anna. And it says, as Joseph and his mother were thinking on these things, Simeon in verse 34 blessed them. And then there was one, Anna in verse 36, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher of great age. And she, a widow of 84 years, never departed from the temple. She actually lived up on the 40 acres behind me on the temple platform, serving God night and day. And she said she served God night and day with fastings and prayers, looking for the coming redemption. Anna is such an example of a spirit-filled woman. What we see about her is that she was old but not helpless. She didn't let her age keep her from serving the Lord. She was between 84 and 100 and something, and she was still serving the Lord. What's also amazing, she had pain. She was a widow, but no bitterness. You see, when we're filled with the Spirit, we can have pain, but it doesn't have to turn into bitterness. We can have limitations in old age, but it doesn't make us useless. And then she gave thanks to the Lord. She had limitations. She never got out of that 40 acres. It said she never left the temple platform, but she didn't feel trapped. She didn't feel empty and useless and restless. She felt that her prayers, her loneliness, even though she was a widow, was met by knowing the Lord and being filled with his spirit. On these steps leading up into the temple, called the Southern Steps today, on the south side of the Temple Mount platform, we meet two very interesting people. Simeon, a spirit-filled man, led by the Lord, satisfied by the Lord, and one who was contented, and a woman, an elderly woman, a widow, who probably in her day should have been hopeless and empty and useless, but when the Spirit of God filled her, her life was filled with joy, filled with peace, and she had the assurance she was doing God's will. Do you know that same assurance? That's what Jesus came to give. We're here in Jerusalem looking at what Jesus did. He came to offer peace, assurance, purpose in life, satisfaction. Right here, from the very steps Herod cut into this rock, from the very steps that 
Jesus was carried from the very steps that all the apostles and all those in the New Testament would have walked on to go up into the temple, we know and serve the same Lord and we worship him today. Before the beginning of time, God had planned to send his son into the world as a baby. Simeon and Anna knew that he was coming. They were waiting for him. They knew from the prophecies that were written, and they were waiting, and they knew. God knew the life, the death, and the resurrection that would follow. It was all planned. And God knows all the history that led each of us to where we are this morning. As we approach the new year, do you know this Jesus? Have you received his salvation? Does the Spirit control your life like that of Simea and Anna? If not, this morning is the perfect time to trust him as your Savior. And then all of us who know and trust him can take heart and believe that he is in control of the new year. God wants us to follow him in the good times, and he wants us to let him carry us through the bad times. Let's stand, and we're going to sing our closing hymn, God of the Ages. Pay attention to the words, because God of the Ages is definitely in control. yesterday, today, and tomorrow be with you forever. <laughs>